It's 11 a.m. here in New York and 10 a.m. in Milwaukee, where GOP presidential candidates participated in the first debate of the 2024 cycle. Candidates like Nikki Haley spoke about issues like abortion rights, climate change, and the legal issues surrounding former President Donald Trump. Joining us now is Caitlin Dawson. He's a former South Carolina GOP chair and a surrogate for the Nikki Haley campaign. Well, first of all, what are your thoughts on how Ambassador Haley did last night? I, I think that our team certainly is very excited about her performance. I mean, first of all, of a country with 331 million people, we got one woman on the stage running for president, and it happens to be the former governor of South Carolina, Nikki Haley. I think she distinguished herself last night. She did a good job introducing herself to the Republican base, and she's one of the survivors. So Nikki Haley, as you know, joined CBS Mornings earlier, and she discussed what she would do if former President Donald Trump was convicted. I want to play some of what she had to say. I would pardon him because I think it's important that the country move on. We can't have a 77-year-old former president in jail and think that our country is not going to fall apart. So the focus really is making sure that the American people will decide this. I trust the American people. I know that they're going to go for someone who's really going to take our country forward. I don't think that's going to be Donald Trump. Would Nikki Haley support Donald Trump if he were the nominee? Oh, you're asking me that question. Well, that'll be up to Governor Haley, but I, b I believe she probably supports whoever wins the nomination would be my guess. Uh, now, Haley's still down in the polls, as a, as a lot of the candidates are quite a bit. And as I've said before, this is, it feels like the first inning of a baseball game. It's going to be a long, a long, drawn-out campaign. What does she need to do to do better to connect with voters? We know her home state of South Carolina is, you know, pretty early up, but there's still Iowa. There's still New Hampshire. What do you see that she needs to do more of? I think we saw the introduction last night. I mean, Nikki's been concentrating on three states, uh, raising adequate money. Um, the, the, the debate last night was a really, really good first introduction to see how tough she is, how she can carry herself on stage, how she can take criticism, and how she can take a punch and also give one. So I, I think last night you had some folks that were disqualified or could be disqualifying themselves. You saw an old Republican Party and you saw a new Republican Party last night. So I guess we move forward, the importance of these debates, the importance of the coverage that we're getting are important to this process. And we'll see when the former president enters the stage, if, if he does. I mean, he gave Joe Biden a pass last night to never have a debate with anybody because former President Trump skipped it. I'm going to springboard a little bit off of Omar's question. Um, you know, to his point, everyone, with the exception of uh, Governor Ron DeSantis, is polling in the single digits including uh, Ambassador Nikki Haley, which a lot of people know. And, you know, her presentation, I think, has been very measured, uh, if you will. What do you think is needed to sort of get her into the double-digit area? Or is it just a matter of there are too many people on the stage, and as some of these candidates fall off, we'll start to see momentum being built? I think the fact that you survived last night is important. It's the first step in, in a couple of really big steps. The Reagan Library is the next big step. So, so courtesy of these debate forums that I didn't see how big the audience was last night. On, I, I didn't on, on your competitor's network. Uh, but I suspect that the audience will get bigger. But that's the opportunity to, to separate yourself. The nice thing about being for Governor Haley is she, she's the only woman on the stage. That separates her immediately. Second of all, she's, the new, she, she's, she's one of the new Republicans who showed up. And, and I think if that's what the Republican base is looking for, Nikki Haley is going to fill, fill that application out. She is the only woman that was on the stage, but she wasn't the only South Carolinian up there. Obviously, you have Senator Tim Scott up, up there. With, with their diverse backgrounds, do you think people need to hear more about her story or what she's accomplished? Maybe what she's done or how she started it? Well, it's our job to do that, and, and certainly Nikki has a compelling story. She, she, she was never supposed to win the races she won. Uh, all, the political pundits, myself as a, as a party chairman, you know, was all for Nikki Haley, but I never thought she had the chance to be governor, and she fooled us. And she did it, and it worked. I wouldn't say fooled us. She proved us wrong. So in the state of South Carolina that never elected a female governor, more or less someone of an Indian heritage, for her to almost win that primary outright, win 
re-election, then become the ambassador to the UN, pretty, pretty, pretty good resume to run for president. So we're, we're, we're real proud of that. And, and South Carolina is pretty high up in, in, in the primary race. Do you think that she's got to make it through to South Carolina and then we'll see her surge? I, I, I do. I, th I think you're going to punch about three tickets out of South Carolina this time. I don't think South Carolina is going to be the finish it has been in the past. Mm. Uh, um, you know, you've got Super Tuesday coming afterwards, and I think I think Nikki Haley's going to. She, she's in for the long run. This has never been a flash in the pan race. So let's let's, let's see. Tim Scott, our U.S. senator, is in it. Uh, she, she's the one who appointed Tim Scott to the U.S. Senate and started that Senate career. Uh, they're friends. Uh, and and we, we saw the other folks. So the question is, is where's the pressure to start thinning the field? Because if you're going to run against Donald Trump, you can't run with eight people. Yeah, right. Well, I guess that's what we'll see moving forward. Uh, I hear it's going to be tougher to get on the next debate stage. So hopefully it won't be as crowded. Yeah. Uh, Caden Dawson, thank you very much. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Thank you, Omar. Appreciate being on today.